In a first-of-its-kind operation in the United States, a team of doctors at Duke University Hospital successfully implanted a bioengineered blood vessel into the arm of a kidney dialysis patient on June 5, 2013. We originally set out to create your own blood vessel by growing your tissues in the laboratory. And as the science and the technology and the prototypes evolved over many years, uh, we came up with a construct that lets us make a structure of tissue that once it's implanted in your body, we have every reason to believe your own cells incorporate into it and it does become a part of you. So it's no longer our graft we made, it's your graft. It's a pioneering event in medicine. This will be one of the first um, sort of new organ systems. It's a very simple organ if you actually think about a blood vessel, but it's really an organ. It's a complex set of tissues that have to have lining with, with the blood vessel and structural requirements. One day we engineer a blood vessel. Uh, the more complex organs may be for my children to engineer, but this will have set the groundwork. And so it's a very, very exciting area in a very exciting field. So dialysis um, care is a, is a huge challenge in and among itself. One of the requirements of people who are on, on dialysis is they have to, to actually get blood out of their body to a machine three times a week uh, to clean the toxins that, that aren't removed because their kidneys no longer work. That requires sort of a special vascular operation. It requires a vascular operation we do um, most often in the arms of a dialysis patient where we connect two blood vessels together um, and in, in the case where we, we use an artificial piece to interpose the two blood vessels, we call that a dialysis graft. And it has to meet the requirements of all other kinds of vascular grafts. It has to have blood that flows through it. It has to be structurally intact. Um, and it turns out that dialysis access is often used as a model for a lot of new emerging vascular technologies. Um, it's one of the places where we can reliably evaluate the graft, we can look at the material, we can assess its blood flow, um, and if it has a problem, let's say it has a failure that we didn't anticipate, um, as opposed to something in the leg or the heart or the neck uh, where someone could have a stroke or a heart attack, this is a failure we would be more likely to pick up and more likely to pick up safely. You know, dialysis graphs that are available today have, have very high early failure rates. You know, the average, the average failure rate for dialysis graphs at six months is 40%. Already 40% 40 of graphs will have failed in some way and need some sort of intervention. It'll be very interesting to us to see how well our graphs do in this setting um, compared to historically what's been observed. So obviously um, if we're not taking a vein from the patient's body, A, that saves that vein to be used somewhere else, but it also saves the patient another incision, another operation. For patients who have dialysis grafts in their arms, probably 70 to 80 percent of graft failures are from the intimal hyperplasia. So anytime you take a vein and sew it in the heart or sew it in some other artery, Veins also suffer from this over a period of months to years. And our dream scenario would be that we have a graft in hand that is really very resistant to this important failure mode. We are saving the world. Congratulations to you. Thank you. If the, the technology works as, as we hope and we believe it, it will. We'll be able to grow all sorts of tissues for patients and have them immediately available. For vascular reconstruction throughout the body. So a surgeon can literally reach up on a shelf and pull down a tissue graft and implant it in, in a patient who needs a replacement blood vessel. Or pre-organ. Or esophagus or. Maybe early prototypes for replacement kidneys. And so that's really going to be a revolution, I think, truly being able to grow replacement parts for patients that they don't have to wait for, that can be ready whenever they need them. Do you have anything to say as a trailblazer? Uh, I mean, you know, I hope it all worked. And, uh, you know, I like, 
I don't mind, you know, them doing the experiment with me to make it better for other people, you know. Uh, I feel like hey, at my age, I can practically live my life anyway, right? But it's, this could help younger people, you know, to be advantage to them, you know. So.